now, here's your hosts, The League Dad, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. Uh, welcome to the All In Podcast. We are back again. Alistair is finally joining us. Still no League Dad, but that's okay. Uh, we are back after um, talking about the games that happened after a long break. So uh, some people weren't doing so great before the break, but now that after the break, uh, you know, power rankings and opinions of teams have changed probably quite a bit. Uh, after this weekend. So, but before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit just of some overseas news. LCK is, uh, what's going on there? They're just being DDoS they're like crazy. Out. They're going to, yeah, they're going to DDoS and to prevent it. They're basically pre recording the game. They're just showing the pre recorded games. Like, you know how yeah. we're doing pre recorded draft? They're like, yeah, no, we're ahead of you. We'll take your meta <laughs> change and we'll just take it to the next level. <laughs> and I get it. Apparently, there's like just issues in general with like, Kore- like Korean figures i guess or maybe just korea in general getting hit by ddos we don't know where it's from we don't know what it is but i mean if this is a solution they need that's fine it's better than eternal pauses which completely ruins the viewer experience yeah ddos is suck yeah i mean i will say it does come it does bring up the question though for for us is like how much does it matter that there's a live experience right because like i've been to live um legal we've all been to live league of legends events right and I think the energy is way different. But when you're watching, how much does it matter that the game on stage is live or not? I think it's just knowing it, right? Like knowing mm. if it's happening in the moment. Because like how many times in like pro play, the highest moments, like you hear this player's hands were shaking because it, it was deafening. Or this player, they made a huge play on stage and then the crowd went absolutely crazy. Like the crowd and the, the how you feel from the crowd, it does change how you play. Like, mm-hmm. DRX, their crazy miracle run, right? Part of the reason why they made it was from, like, spirit energy from the crowd rooting for them against the top. You know, I feel like it matters. I do. I definitely agree. I think I think it's one of those things, like, if you're doing something in front of people, you, it, whether it's online or it's in front, of pe- like, in front of people in person, I think being in person is what's more important. And it's the same thing. It's like, well, would someone want to watch, you know, a football game in person on a screen? type mm. of thing like do they, they you, mm. you know you show up to a football stadium and everyone's watching on the on the jumbotron it's like do you do you really want to do that mm, that's fair yeah i i kind of agree with that but i did want to see what our general opinion of it is because we've all you know had the opportunity to go to one of these yeah yeah it's i feel like it's a it's a way bigger different feel to also know that the players are down there in the moment with us too it's a big deal it's a whole it's a whole idea of sports entertainment but at the same time, I don't blame them for doing pre-recorded because they have to. Like that's I, oh, that's not sure. their fault. So, sure, yeah. yeah, that's that sucks for them, honestly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, that's that. But yeah, hopefully Korea gets it figured out. Uh, I think we were talking about it last time, like trying to figure out like how and why this is happening. Obviously, we're not gonna have answers to that. That's way too hard of a question for us to to answer. But like seriously, like why the hell is this happening? This is so weird. Um, any like crackpot theories? Any? Weird ideas about why this is happening for so long? Uh, it's above my pay grade. Yeah, okay, fair. <laughs> we don't uh, get paid at all, so. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'll say, like, just to, like, look at other podcasts I follow, you know, like The Diet and stuff, like, they have let go of people, right? And you saw the last recent episode, Medios was sitting there, and he just was talking without his mouth moving, because that's how, like, unedited or not polished it was, right? Mm. For over a minute, he was just talking, but his mouth wasn't moving because it was so desynced. Mm. Uh, so, also say like a lot of key people might have been being let go across the different leagues, and maybe the network engineer they're like, "Oh, you know, things work. Why do we need you?" And now things don't work. Uh, that's that's a guess. Could also maybe. be you know yeah. a different league. Just, you know, it could be LPL, it could be a SCA, whatever. Someone just does not like the LCK, and they're like, "Okay, let's yeah. uh, let's mess with them." You don't know, right? That's a crackpot theory, but. There's a lot of people out there, and if it's actually that vulnerable, anyone could just do it for shits and giggles, right? Because you get to see, sure. like, Faker can't play. You know, like, you actually see influence, and people are crazy like that. They love to mess with famous people. Yeah, it's super true. I mean, I'm sure Riot Korea hasn't been nice to a lot of people. <laughs> so, and, you know, take a right, yeah, smart yeah, guy yeah. with a vengeance and no other life. They make their whole their whole life about rooting LCK or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. that it keeps happening, um, but... Hey, there's that. We can't do much about it because we got our own problems to figure out. LCS 
is being relegated to the broom closet. Did you guys see Zazel's uh, viral interview <laughs> that he I gave him? Okay, so he uh, to summarize, he was basically had a quick one liner about how uh, you know uh, we're basically I don't know. Not, he said we're in like the broom closet or whatever, the, the back room or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like in like we're you know. Wish we were Valorant players or something like that. I don't know. It was a jab yeah, at yeah. Riot. Yeah, something like that. And I got to say, I fully agree. Like, that sucks. This is something that we were afraid of and thinking and talking about, like, what, two, three years ago when we got moved off the weekend for Valorant to be in the same uh, studio, right? And then now that we are back on the weekends, well, guess what? We just don't have priority compared to uh, Valorant. So that sucks. Um, yeah. Yes. Quick takes. <laughs> It's so obvious, right? Like, I mean, I watch Valorant. I like Valorant like you know, as much as the next guy. But like, these are two pre- premier tier one esports. There are maybe COD League on a major weekend or something like in CS:GO, right? But not in NA. In NA, it's these two esports or bust essentially, as far as I can tell. So, you know, Apex is not a huge esport in NA anymore. Fortnite is not a major esport. There's like so many of these games that don't have a major scene here. Overwatch League is literally dead or dying. It's, dead. Uh, it's been dead for months. It's been dead. They literally pay people to go screw off, right? They're like, you know, we're paying you so you don't sue us for dissolving the league that you paid so much to get into, right? Um, so how can you possibly not have two studios <laughs> or two venues, like real venues for these to play? We took a two week break and we still came back after one week and have to play in the back room. Like, how is that acceptable, right? You're taking all these cuts and Riot's not a public company. Like, we don't need to maximize shareholder value or anything. We're trying, you, are you really treating the NA League of Legends player base like well by doing that? Um, you can, you know, argue the weekend to weekday experiment was just a failure, whatever. Time zones, you know, we all thought it was bad, but, you know, they, had data but in this case this is just too obvious there's no way to spin this right um <laughs> yeah i mean i think at the end of the day one of them makes them a lot more money i i just i think it's pretty simple yeah it's true valorant and na is uh successful with the young kids league of legends is not <laughs> it is not a zoomer game anymore uh it's uh it's a bit of her older the older generation, I guess, which is weird yeah, to we think live about. In, we live in an era where League of Legends is like a more hardcore game or a more gamer game, and then like the other games, like shooter games, are mainstream. Well, when I was growing up, it was like you play Counter Strike, you're a hardcore, or Dota or something. I mean, Dota's still more hardcore, but like there's no normal person who knows what Dota Two is. No, yeah, um, I mean, like honestly, Valorant is like a casual game. Like most people you will run into that are our age and younger have played Valorant. Most of them have heard of league and have no, been told not to touch it you know what i mean it's like the stigma has really taken over american culture i guess um, oh yeah i mean valorant's for the it, valorant's for the the zoomers with a caffeine addiction like yeah it's pretty it's pretty uh that could have been us that could have been us but we failed Riot failed us in i mean at the end of the day it's still a game made by riot yeah that's true league who, Riot failed, say, failed the league community. who's to say it doesn't happen again with a different game in five years they make another big game that isn't valorant yeah, I think it's different with Valorant, though, because Valorant, it's like, it's, I really think people dislike the idea of if you mess up in the early game for League of Legends, the rest of the next 30 minutes of you for you is, is scuffed. Where in Valorant, you could die 10 times and you're still the same power level almost, right? Sure, your guns are a bit different here, there, but you still kill people with the same amount. So I do think that that just like innate aspect of the game makes it not able to be casual. I mean, I which... think it's also that Riot completely I... lost control of League. I, I will say though, sense. League can feel way more fun and like so at lower levels, right? When you're playing League with your buddies and everyone's like playing against relatively no smurfs, right? Assuming there's no smurfs, this game has way higher highs than a shooter game in the sense of like in a shooter game, you're constantly reminded I'm just bad, I missed. Like mm. it doesn't matter that they're bronze and I'm bronze. We're having a Runescape battle where both of us are hitting zero damage on each other. So in my mind, like League really is casual friendly in some ways in that like. You can go fantasy. Like, you don't get to trip, like, you know, get 10 kill Master Yi in iron or bronze, right? 
Mm. There's no equivalent to that in Valorant when you're iron and bronze. You're not going to smurf like crazy when you snowball. So I think the highs are really high in League. And I also have been watching a lot of Japanese people who are streaming. They are having tournaments around streamers now because League is just hot right now in, in, in Japan, which is a market that's never been very good at League, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not even PC gamers. So to me, I'm like, I think it's more so like we as a community have become more and more insular, more and more unwelcoming to others. And so it's like, I don't think the game inherently isn't casual friendly. I think that our community isn't casual ah, friendly. I like and that. That's, that's I, a very good point, Kevin. Yeah. Because I go to China, there's like there's a bunch of shitters there. Like I go yeah. to the, that cafe and they're like absolutely dog elo and they're just having fun all the mm-hmm. time. And I watch when I watch someone new who's never been tainted by league content or the community just play. No, it's, it's still fun. It's still a great game. In fact, it's, it's a lot more accessible now than when Thornmail Ash was the tutorial. But that's my rant. I think League is still accessible. I think that us as NA just have to slowly... The culture will get better as, like, the toxic... Well, the problem is our figureheads are mostly neutral or toxic. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's what we have to work with. There's very few, like, super positive, like, famous yeah. players that also stream but and have large audiences. I do, I do like... Low. Yeah. <laughs> well, Quantum yeah. or low. That's about yeah. it. They, uh, they're not not Cajal's popular okay. enough, though, honestly. But yeah, I mean, Cajal's kind of going off the deep end a little bit. He's a little XQCing these days. But um, for for the mm-hmm. point that you made about like the high highs of League, I actually have to 100% agree. When you do like a big team coordinated setup play that took like a minute in advance to plan out, that is actually nothing. You can't do anything like that in any other game, well, except another MOBA, right? Like it is very unique in that aspect. So I appreciate that a lot about League. So that's cool. But let's move into the LCS games, right? That was a good conversation. Mm -hmm. Now we can talk about our home region. And just to cap off from last week when me and Kevin did an episode, uh, our predictions were very, very wrong. I think we got almost all of them wrong, um, except I think you got FlyQuest versus 100 Thieves, correct? And I got that one wrong. I got a Shopify win right, but, like, I mean, that's, like, it's it's a coin flick. They're playing against, like, bottom Mm -hmm. teams. Like, they played against Immortals and barely won. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but let's talk about this games. I think uh, the most interesting thing we can talk about, as usual, is Cloud9. Are they back? They looked pretty good, I guess, um, you know, from being really inconsistent and unsure how good they were uh, before the break, coming back in the great, coming back from the break on a 2-0 uh, victory and beating FlyQuest, their main competition in the standings, at least. Um, what do you guys think about Cloud9? What's going on with them? Um, I think for Cloud9's case, they're more cohesive with like their team comps. They, when they were before the break, they were playing Callista a bunch and Lucian a bunch, right? They have two losses on Lucian, and they were one on one on Callista, and then a bunch of Varus. Right after the break, uh, if I remember correctly, oh, actually they played one more game of Varus. But right after the break, they played Varus, Zeri, Senna, Smolder. Now, tell me what the game plan has changed around here, right? Before. They were like, okay, fudge, you play a carry top or somebody who, like, you know, has prio and, like, or not has prio, needs jungle help, and we will play lane bully's bot, right? But then we don't do anything with our lane bully's bot, and we get absolutely smacked because there's no synergy down there, and we're also tying Vulcan down there. Now, the, the game plan change is that they have late game insurance in Berserker. They have some of the carries are buffed, like Zeri, and Smolder is absolutely disgusting and illegal as a character. And they, do, they don't care. Fudge can int his ass off, lose top lane still, despite them being winning, and they can still win. Although, I will say, they did show a stat. I think Fudge has one of the highest stats of a top laner. Interesting. Um, when they were showing him against Whippo, they were like first and second. I hmm. don't know if that was supposed to be all time, or if that was supposed to be this season, but I was like, this doesn't make any sense if it's this season, because I don't think Fudge has been doing much of anything this season. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. I think it might have been on head to head, but his CSD at fifteen is ten point five. Uh, okay, which is the highest uh, or one of the highest? Yeah, He's that must be all time because the CS per minute is actually oh CSD oh it doesn't say CSD, CSD on yeah yeah CSD for this season specifically. Oh yeah, that's ten ten point five yeah. He's 10. had eighty two percent of the time at fifteen minutes. Yeah. So that, as I as I said, they played around him for the first before the break. They played really hard around him, mm. and it didn't work. Yeah, no, clearly not. Interesting. I mean, okay. I mean, I think also on that same stat sheet, they showed that he has zero solo kills in all of summer. Um, they did. So, or something something like Oof. that. 
I mean, I think... I mean, to be fair, if you're getting Giga Camps, like when Jojo Pyong was getting Giga Camp by Armeo, you won't have that many solo kills because your jungler is there for every opportunity. Yeah, but, I, I suppose I digress. I digress. He hasn't done much with the ganks either in terms <laughs> of getting Giga that, Fed. That's mm. true. I mean, I think personally... I think it's a bit too early to say if they're back or not. I think, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. again, one, one, they had a good weekend, but they had a string of bad weekends in a row, and, you know, it, it could, they had a good break. And, I mean, sure, they had, they played FlyQuest, and who was it? FlyQuest and Liquid. 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 And they almost lost to Liquid. Let me, I don't, I'm, I'm they, gonna they get should have later. lost both games. Uh, I, to Liquid, they should have lost. They, they completely they, stomped on FlyQuest. No, yeah, the the, that was, that was the game that won like 45 minutes where it was just Senna versus Smolder, was it not? Or am I thinking it was no, a no. Game? The no, no. game versus Fly, uh, FlyQuest was a complete blowout. Yeah, 29 oh, okay. minute game. Very little resistance across yeah. the board. I mean, um, the, that was, oh, the Smolder game was the Liquid game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, liquid. yeah. The Liquid yeah. game was mm-hmm. close, yeah. I mean, honestly... And we won't talk about EPA yet, <laughs> but we'll get to him in a second. Oh, we'll get to it. Oh, we'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, I imagine there'll be a rant coming. Oh, my uh, But, you know, uh, C9, I think that something they needed, if you're a C9 fan, they needed that Team Liquid win, right? Because it was close. They were slipping, and, um, you know, impact was pretty big. But they were able to bring it back. They were able to keep it. Uh, I think most importantly, the thing for me was that Berserker actually looked like a human, finally. Uh, he was looking kind of not alive as before the break. I think right before the break, he was ha- he had a good uh, single game on the Zeri. Um, but JoJo and Berserker had huge numbers, huge stats, huge damage on the late game carries. If Cloud9 can win with these comps with the late game carry bullshit, then, you know, they're always going to do well in NA, right? The thing that I'm still missing, which, you know, we did see against FlyQuest was... The early game domination, right? So I like that we saw both looks from Cloud9 this weekend where they played the Renekton Nidalee, Blabber got fed, he was all around the map, he was completely out jungling, uh, inspired, Jensen was getting bodied in lane like really hard, and that's cool, right? Cloud9 did show one good early game uh, win, and they showed a late game win. So I think if you're a Cloud9 fan, you can be pretty happy with that, and be hopeful, but still concerned maybe about their progress going forward. All right, yeah, now... Let's talk about Team Liquid, okay? Kevin's favorite team. You can just go ahead and start. What are, you, what are your thoughts on Team Liquid, Kevin? Yeah, so Liquid this weekend, the first game. Not, I, so the good news is APA didn't get absolutely clobbered by Palafox for once in a long time. <laughs> and that's, like, actually a good thing. They did took a terrible fight when they when Palafox and uh, APA were just facing off against each other. Whatever. Okay, that, those are the details. I think the game against C9 Liquid showed a lot of strength um, in terms of early game plan, in terms of there were times where they did actually, you know, okay, Umpty got a very lucky Baron steal. But besides that, they did play well, but you can see they overextended. This time it was actually Core's fault. I know APA misplayed as well, but Core actually just, like, decided to flash in, and, like, instead of going for Dragon Soul after they took top inhib, they were just like, yeah, let's go for it on, I think he had Zanya's? Flash and all on Azir, and they tried to go all in on him and completely threw the game off of that uh, one play. And I do think APA, both in game one and two, he is he's just not able to play. He's actually playing worse in the mid to late game than he was last season. Then his rookie split. Um, so I, I he he has single handedly lost more games than any player on. Like- yeah, rough to hear. Any uh, thoughts? My computer just got put to sleep by my cat. Can really? You hear me? You're still yeah, here. We yeah. yeah, we can. Yeah. Cool. You had a little stutter, but you were gone for a bit. Yeah. I, I kind of agree oh. with what you're saying, but I also think we kind of need to put in a bit more context. Cause I think I, I think there's a lot more stock put into him by the team for this split because, you know, last mm. split, his, he was playing champs that are much easier to execute. He wasn't playing Azir. He was playing Ziggs. He was playing Tristana. He was playing Cassiopeia, right? These, these champs are much easier to play than Azir. Nico. And I, I think, yeah, Nico. I I think that does make a pretty big difference on, because mm-hmm. like again, those those champs if you mess up, it's not as big a deal. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I don't know, uh, except it's for Cassie, Cassie. But the others except, yeah. you can still do stuff on. I don't know, man. I'm starting to not feel that way about his ear. His ear seems fucking brain dead to me these days. Like, <laughs> this is like the most OP bullshit. Just dash around, you're always okay, safe. Can't gank. Easy farming. Heart, Landry's build that JoJo ran, I was like, I cannot 
I cannot fathom why this is actually working. I mean, I know why yeah. it's working, but it's actually disgusting that it is. I mean, I, I agree, but I think it's kind of, I think the reason Azir doesn't seem that difficult nowadays is because we've just seen him so much that it all just kind of fades into the same. Like, you're, you're not watching anything new happen with the champion at this point because it's been picked banned he, for he the He applies last on year. hits now, so you can go fleet no, or grab. but the, the play style is barely different, okay? When it's tank okay, Azir, okay. you're just like, you're doing the same thing as yeah, any other true. Azir. You're just tankier and your damage is a bit... It's still stupid hot. I don't know. I hate Azir right now. I think he is so unhealthy for the game, mostly because he's completely bullshit in the early laning phase. As a jungler, it's like, how are you guys are supposed to gank this bullshit? He always has Pryo. He is has very low mana cost, and he can just escape from a mile away. He just whoops. And like the Sharima shuffle used to be something that was impressive to do 10 years ago, but nowadays it's like anybody can do anything. Like, the, you know, the, the crazy, like, Sarima shuffle and then flash over and like it, get a bunch of people in like it's so easy to do it's like Nico ulti in with a flash and getting like a five man ulti when she first was released uh, and reworked I thought it was like really impressive really cool now I realize any pro player with any kind of brain can get a five man Nico ulti right and I'm starting to feel that way about Azir these days it's like any brain any player with half a brain can get a really big scoop on Azir it's not that impressive so I've been really over Azir honestly. Um, so I, I don't even think APA's Azir was that bad. The Talia though was disgusting. Oh my God. That was horrendous. Uh, <laughs> I did not like the Talia. Uh, maybe that's just, uh, maybe the that's TPs just, uh, are also an issue. He just shows up and then feeds kills. Yeah. Like it happens more than once, right? Like I thought this was a summit special, but he passed the torch down. Um, yeah. and I will also say as a liquid fan, so I'm going to be extra harsh, right? Cause obviously I want liquid to do well. I think they're literally one mid laner and maybe a quarter to half an AD carry away and a support, I guess. So there are actually a lot of pieces, but they are almost winning a lot of these games against major teams. Is AP not the worst performing mid laner in the league right now? There are only eight mid laners. Can you name one that's worse consistently? Because on the bottom teams, Insanity is better, right? Shopify is Insanity. Insanity to me is barely a mid laner, dude. That dude is like a half a tank player, like half a top laner. <laughs> yeah, but in terms of effectiveness, no, I mean, yeah. Like, he, he's, yeah, he's not a mid laner, but he's better. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would take uh, I would take him over APA right now. Let me think. Is there other mid laners? I mean, Mask. Immortals has Mask, and then Dignitas has Dove. Like, I. I, so for Mask and Dove, I would say that mechanically I feel better about Mask and Dove. I just don't know if they like actually operate within a team better because they're on worse teams and yes, they just seem less cohesive. But I have to say Mask and Dove in a straight hands contest, I would take him over APA. But APA, it seems like he is there for the team. It's just when he's there mm -hmm. for the team, it's just a little bit of a new tea sometimes like it's like hey i'm here at the right time or i'm here slightly too late or slightly too early and i make a little oopsies blah blah blah. but like i don't know it's it's a tough transition right going from what his position was last split to what his position was this split also you got new shot callers and impact and oopty and stuff like that it's it, i won't say it's easy for apa right that's the only caveat and benefit of the doubt i'll give him that it's mm -hmm. probably not he's probably not in an easy situation but at the same time, it's like Team Liquid's supposed to be a top org. They have all these great players on their team. And this isn't the kind of performance that they can have if they want to be considered a top team. And it is pretty clear for APA that he's not performing at the top. So that's what we'll say on him. Unfortunate. Any last thoughts on Team Liquid uh, before we move on and talk a little bit about other teams? Impact is so goddamn good when he's played around <laughs> even a little bit. Like, he's... I think he's playing way better than last split. I mean, that's a very low bar, but he's playing quite well. I think so, too. Uh, I think uh, there's a couple of moments where I would have liked him to do some different stuff on the jacks, uh, but that's minor, honestly. Mm -hmm. That's something that he could probably figure out on his own. Um, but yeah, all right, let's move on to FlyQuest. Uh, they got completely bodied by Cloud9. Since we already talked about Cloud9, I'll just briefly say that I feel like FlyQuest had a really crap draft. Um, also... Another side note, uh, this is a shout out to Kimmer uh, on the Discord. I have been doing some esports betting just for fun, like $5 here, $10 there. I bet on Fly on Jensen to get a bunch of kills, and then he locked in Karma mid, and I was like, 
well, fuck that. That's not happening anymore. So, uh, Karma. And you. So, it's, it's really hard to bet on mid laners, guys. Just heads up because Karma mid is meta. Don't bet on mid laners for kills anymore, okay? Put your put your money elsewhere. So, you that was right. bet rough. on zero kills then. <laughs> I should bet on the less. That's right. That's right. I should. Because uh, they're freaking Karma mid, man. But, uh, anyways, FlyQuest, they had a pretty crap game against C9 where it seemed like they did kind of nothing. And then they had a very. Um, I don't know, very one, like, just complete stomp over 100 Thieves. Uh, 100 Thieves, to be fair, they fought back with a lot of, like, their 100 Thieves, just, like, tenacity, where, like, we'll always fight no matter what. But, man, that was a stomp. Uh, that was a steaming game for FlyQuest. So, um, after that brief overview, what are your thoughts on FlyQuest? Yeah, as you said, like, 100 Thieves, when you play against, like, a team that does fight to the death, that's how you get the 17-minute Matt Lions, like, meme, or whatever, 1643. <laughs> Yeah, it's because when you fight to the death, like, you don't stall it out, right? You don't try to lose gracefully. You're trying to, like, actually go for the opportunities. And, yeah, so you're going to lose faster. It is going to look more stompy if it doesn't work. Um, So in that sense, yeah, FlyQuest knows how to put the pressure on. That was fine. Uh, the thing of note for the C9 FlyQuest game um, was that they actually won with Renekton Middley, which I, I think in the history of League, NA League, I don't know if I've ever seen that win a game. No, you at have. Least not, you at have. least not against a top team. I have, okay, yeah. But not against, like, a, the number one seed using Renekton and Nidalee. I feel like it's never, like, been an upset, right? It's usually the mm-hmm. better team plays it. So, you know, I was the better team there. Uh, I, I'm i just going to keep playing Fudge. So, I yeah, go go ahead, Alistair, please. I can't. <laughs> um, I think FlyQuest would hands down be the best team in the league if their bot lane was better at laning. Um, uh, I feel like, mm. I feel like at least when it comes to laning, I think FlyQuest might have the weakest bot lane in the league. Uh, just mm. for the reason that I swear, I don't think I've watched a single FlyQuest game where their bot lane doesn't get solo killed at least once. Mm, except for Cloud9, right before the break, right? FlyQuest was solo killing Cloud9's bot lane, like, on repeat. Yeah, there, over that's over true, again. that's true, yeah. yeah. That was, so that, that was one instance, but otherwise... I think, I think okay. the majority of games... I guess games... you're right, because that's stuck in my head, but... Hmm, they have died a lot. Like they I, do die a lot. Yes. I think I think out of lane. I think I mean I I think both of them are very good outside of lane. Mm. Um, I think like, I think Masu is very good at team fighting. He's he's in the right place at the right time mid late game. But I think early game. I don't know which one of them is messing it up. But I I swear they're like, they're perma dying in lane. Like even once or twice. But that does make a difference. You know you you die once. You lose control of your lane. Now enemy support. Uh, gets first move to Grubs or Herald or whatnot. Like you lose a dragon for it. It it matters. Yeah, yeah that's true. I also think FlyQuest has a huge hard on for Ash support, and I wonder if that's because Boosio likes to play Ash support, or for Inspired really likes to have clairvoyance on his team. I'm not really sure, but I suspect it's actually the Inspired angle. I, I feel like it's. <laughs> I think I think part of it is Boosio just wants to be Carrier. I mean, I I think mm. I mean Boosio has always been someone who's played the dumbest shit support in challenge. Yeah, he likes to play damage supports, it's true. Like, um, I mean, he, 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 play, he was playing Camille support two years ago, he's playing Singe support, like, he, he just, he picks whatever. You look at his match history in solo queue, I bet the majority of it is not, like, a real support. Yeah, he did the Azir support in his debut game. That was fun to, uh, that was fun to uh, laugh with him about. Yeah, but because, uh, he, I, he, I do think the Ash support is great for Inspired because of the, the level 3 Hawkshot or level 2 Hawkshot, whatever one uh, boosts you. I think he takes a level 2. Um, so, I mean, Inspired is probably the best juggler in the league. Maybe River or Inspired, you could make an argument for right now who's performing Contracts. best. Contracts? Well, I would... Maybe after this week you make an argument, but Contracts is doing some good ass inting before the break. I think Contracts is more important to his team than Inspired is to his team. Okay, that's well, that's a different argument then. That's a different argument. Yeah, but I can agree with that's, that. That's true. That's fair. That's I could agree with that though. Um, but yeah, so I I like FlyQuest. Uh, I do think Jensen is really good. Like he's insane, but you can't put him on a champion he's not comfortable with, right? So he looked terrible in the Karma mid. Didn't know what he was doing. He doesn't play Karma mid, which is fair. But Jensen probably has the most Oriana games out of anybody in the LCS, right? So, lo and behold, he was smurfing like crazy on that champion. So, I honestly think Jensen has a big enough champion pool. You don't have to worry about it, right? You stick him on Oriana. You stick him on Azir. You stick him on whatever other meta mage that he's good at. And I think Jensen will look like one of the best mid laners. Because, honestly, like I, even though he got completely pooped on by JoJo, I would consider him right up there as one of the best mid laners right now. Jensen looks really, really good this split. Um, so that's cool. 
uh, for FlyQuest. Um, Blipwo is honestly, it he is only good when he has a unique weird counter pick. He's almost like Busio, but for top lane, right? I I feel like he is only looks good when he has a weird unconventional top lane counter pick, right? When I see him just play a normal blind pick, like I don't even know Aatrox or. I don't even Cassante. think he plays Cassante. Does he play Cassante? I don't know if I've seen him play Cassante. I think he has. But, like, whenever he plays the... Oh, Udyr too. Like, his Udyr is fine, right? But, like, the times where I'm like, oh, shit, Bupo's popping off. It's when he's on, like, Olaf or Darius Olaf. Or, or some yep. weird shit, right? So, interesting. We'll see how that goes when we get into playoffs. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of most of our top teams. We could talk about energy now. Um, I mean, they kind of only play bottom teams, right? Rip Tim Liquid, I mean. <laughs> um ah. Not, uh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kevin, Kevin, the best part is Kevin can't even like argue with you about it. <laughs> they're a bottom team right now. That's just a fact. I mean, I mean to be to be fair, to they're a bottom six. team by one game. Like they're yeah. they're two games away from like, top team. Like to be fair, yeah. like but, you know that it's true. Um, I will. I think NRG is still worth talking about. So go ahead. Sorry, I just no. That's fine. I'm sorry. I just had to throw that in there. No, no, don't be uh, sorry. Yeah. They deserve. <laughs> okay, energy. Um, I always will always think that they're a good team until we see how they actually perform in playoffs because I don't think they take regular season that seriously. We're kind of talking about this last episode too, where it's like energy is different from Cloud Nine the split, right? Energy, even though they have the same score as Cloud Nine, we were kind of thinking that like, well, I still have more faith in energy because they do kind of clown around in the regular split. That's yeah. always been their identity, and even last year when they won the whole thing they were clowning around for the majority of the year and then they won the split right so i think energy is that team that's always gonna be scrappy they're never gonna look like they have a perfectly clean game plan but they're always gonna have that that vibe you know that power of friendship where we'll just clutch it out randomly anyways and and ag2 kind of yeah I mean, better than G2 almost, right? The better improved than version. G2. Yeah, it's more like G2's EU energy, right? <laughs> so um, I, I really liked that they did some interesting stuff with the uh, the Ari mid and the Volley Bear. That was new and different. Honestly, Team Liquid's comp was so shit that um, I'm surprised it still went to 40. Actually, no, it makes a lot of sense. They went to 45 minutes because of the Seraphine Azir. Yeah. But like, holy cow, guys. Like, have you guys heard of this item? Oh, they didn't even build it, right? Koenig? I'm, surpri- I'm surprised Energy didn't build Koenig because uh, Team Liquid had full magic damage comp, right? That would have been the most OP item. That comp was so... Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. I he bought a Koenig, okay. I think if they, build, I think the if they played Tristana too. instead of Azir, they probably win that game. Yeah, because they had a full magic damage comp. That makes a lot of sense to me. It really had no sense in this comp. It got funneled 492 CS, right? While the next highest was 329 on Yun. Yeah. Like, why? Mm-mm. Absolutely why. Impact was like 5-1 and one this game, but like he was the only AD on the whole team. Like, you know, it, yeah. These days, it's acceptable to do a full AD comp because that's just how the game works. It's actually, it's not good, but it's more viable than a full AP comp. Full AP oh, comp absolutely. is just... Not viable, bro. Sorry. AD has, like, scaling attack speed along with it, right? And AP just, I mean, besides Nashor, just doesn't have that ability to do that. Yeah. AD should be the one killing tanks. And I don't even think Energy could, like, respect it fully. Like, if if Energy wanted to respect it even more, right, they could have. Like, they really could have opted more into Magic Resist and played around it even more. But they didn't even, like, Dokla's got a freaking you know, Tabby's and Palfox went Ionian boots instead of Merc treads and stuff like that. Like energy could have gone full resident sleeper to go full MR, but they didn't, they, they had their fun. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about energy versus immortals just super briefly. I, uh, I both love and hate Dokla for going for the vein top. Honestly, that is the bane of my existence. I hate vein top with a passion. I'm playing a lot more top lane, but you know what? Fine. It's cool. You did an LCS. No one ever does an LCS. So well, yeah, it's, it's two and four, one and four. Something like that. I mean, yeah, because it's well. If you're counting top lane, it's probably a little better. But uh, if, JoJo if there's a graphic shown in, L- in LCS, it's either one and four or two and four. Well, yeah. time. well Dokla, he got one of them. He got one of the wins, and uh, I guess he looked pretty good at it. <laughs> he went the uh, essence. He went the on hit like one tap build instead of like the 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 Bork Ginsu's type of stuff, um, which was fine. Um, yeah. Any any last comments on energy? I... Yeah, uh, NRG, like, uh, weren't they down, like, 7k gold at some point against the, um, against Immortals? That's, uh, 
a little concerning. I mean, the vein didn't mm. actually do anything until mega late game. Yeah, mm. that's what so I was going to say. I, mm. mm-hmm. I think like the vein was not the reason. Like I thought Castle, even though he was o five and one, like he played fine. He like was doing what you need to do on Renekton early, and they like were getting a lead, and then they completely soiled it. <laughs> soiled it. So no, exactly. That's what, that's what came through my head right there. I just didn't remember the intonation, but yeah. I was like, "Oh!" And once again, like uh, this feels weird to me. But tactical Ole is like not, even though they're on a bottom team, they're like not a bad bot lane. No, I think like, they're actually yeah, as you, now. yeah, Meech and uh, Meech and Masu, I think they are uh, from Fight Class. Like, yeah, they probably are a worse laning team. Uh, uh, yeah, Masu and Busio. Yeah, Meech yeah, is, Busio, Meech is hundred thieves. He's yeah, oh, yes, they were playing against each other. Yes. I I, well, you, I still now. think Meech and uh, who's the support? Meech and Ayla. Yeah, I think I still think they're the best bot lane in the league. Hmm, interesting. That that was, that was my hot take at the beginning of the split, and I am still. That's true. With you it. just you did say that. Uh, who do I think is the best bot lane in the league? I don't really have opinions on. No, I don't have opinion. I just have not had opinions on the bot lanes in LCS. Honestly, they haven't been that interesting to me. Honestly, the most interesting things I think have been mid jungle this split. Oh, for sure. Um, so yeah, that's that. But yeah, yeah t- tactical Ole are legit. I uh, I do think the uh, the Callista build with the Jack show late with the uh, Terminus is actually pretty strong. And I've been seeing a lot of people go this like type of stuff on other champions too. I actually think it's really strong. Um, that kind of yeah. combo. Terminus um, after the change where it stacks up quicker. Yeah, I, it's yeah. just a legit item with oh, the yeah. Jack show. Yeah, but then to be fair though, the Vayne pick is great into the draft, right? Vayne is great into Renekton and Volubear and Callista. Yeah, no, that idea made so, sense. I just thought Dokla's yeah. Vayne was. I mean, yeah. he, he was even like he CS just at like 15 as Vayne versus Renekton. Like, yeah, that's true. That's pretty good. He was yeah. down CS. He was down 10 before the gank came in and gave him a great crash. Like, they, remember when the gank came in? Yep. Renekton crashed into the turret and got plates. And I'm like, <laughs> what am I watching here? What, why is NRG not prioring the Vayne's advantage? Yeah, I don't think yeah. that was Vayne was that good. I mean, it was, it was better mid-late game. But I also think, yeah. I, I think it was super troll for him to take Ghost if he's not going to play ball in, or he's not going to play top lane as aggressive as he was. You just, yeah, you just take cleanse, because it felt like... In these team fights, they it would have been so much easier for them to win the game if he had cleanse. Because you take ghost mm. to dominate lane. If you're not gonna dominate lane, you just take cleanse. Hmm. That makes yep. a lot of sense Agreed. in the game like this. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, well, that's kind of most of our top teams that I think we'll go over. Any other team you want to shout out? Not for this week. Not for this week. No, no, no. Immortals hype. No dig hype. <laughs> I no, think Shopify is still like a fun team to watch. I really like. I keep thinking. I don't think they're a bottom team. I I think at least Boy, like this guy on the eighty carries. We don't B Boy. Sorry, Boy Boy. Uh, I know that the bot lane combo is maybe not the best, but he himself is. This guy is legit. When he was playing Lucian, I'm like, holy shit! No, he's, 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 a, he's the best Lucian in the league. And I mean, to be he's, fair, low he's, bar. I think he's the best Lucian eighty carry so far. I That's think actually reasonable. The best. I think he looks. He has the best hands. <laughs> he's I think. always putting out more damage, and he has no support. Like he, he has very little peel, very little space. Make relatively speaking, right compared to the top teams. But he is always like, I'm watching the combo again. Though he knows exactly what to do in the combos, and then the spacing with the combos is the important part for any character. And he like generally is very good. Yeah, no, he still makes mistakes, but like I'm, this guy is. Like, I, I think his biggest mistake he makes is that Lucian build, but. He, that's that's the Korean shortfall. <laughs> you have Def playing out of his mind and building IE second when it's sixty percent threshold. I don't know, man. No, it it's happens. Just like <laughs> Stormraiser rapid fire first two items is so fake in my opinion. Just go crack and uh, quick blades. I don't know. Wait, he did? Didn't B Boy do that? No, he, he, did he that. went. He went uh, in the game where you, he was like popping off in the one team fight and he just wasn't killing anyone. He had Stormraiser. He had oh. Stormraiser rapid fire and then was building quick blades third. That, that was uh, that was before the break though, right? In the game versus Dignitas, he he went the Kraken Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was that was before the break. But this yeah, this yeah. weekend, he, oh, he was like smurf, he was was smurfing like, one team. Sure I watched that though. He was playing yeah. it perfectly. Like it was insane to watch. Yeah. But his damage output was like two. <laughs> I see. So. Yeah. Yeah, that was before the break though. But after the break, I think he fixed his build and he still looked pretty good on the on the Lucian. Uh, but yeah, I mean Shopify to me is not I. I was hyping them up before the split started, trying to put them as my dark horse, and I regret it immensely. I've actually, whenever I get betrayed by a team, it's really hard for me to come back. Like I've never they come. Go from, they go from dark horse to eighth place 
crash. <laughs> yeah, like to me, Shopify is the worst team in the league, honestly. And unfortunately, all the hype I heard about Zazel, not deserved. He looks so useless sometimes. Um, Murphine and Amateur just doesn't count for anything. Farming Corp is like the obvious example of this. Yeah, he was getting a lot of hype from pros, though, saying that, you know, he was denying top LCS offers to get on to the right team. And now I'm like, okay, well, that was all bullshit. Um, <laughs> but okay, if that is true, it's worse for him. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not true for him. Yeah. All right, that's, that's enough about the LCS teams. Let's talk a little bit about the meta, which oh, is, God. I guess perfect about the LCS teams. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm going to start, I'm the host, and I'm going to talk about Jungle. I don't like it when Volibear is meta. I hate that he's back. He is the champion that makes me be like, well, Jungle is just the the the, the facilitator slave. He's there for a stun, he's there to be tanky and do early game stuff, and then he's freaking useless, and I hate Volibear. I've always hated Volibear. I don't like him, I don't play him. Um... But he's back, and it's because they've nerfed all the other interesting junglers, right? You know, we uh, we might get Wukong back later because of his big buffs, but right now we got some boring ass junglers in the in the meta, and I am not a fan. Um, you know, Sejuani, like I, mean, I guess they nerfed Maokai a lot too, right? That's why he's not here. But uh, you know, we got we got Ivern, Sejuani, Volibear, Poppy, and Vi sometimes, right? And Volibear. It's just not it. Doesn't hit right. All right. Any other things you guys want to complain about the meta or enjoy uh, about the meta? Smolder <laughs> in play. So once a complaint, once an enjoy, I think you can guess which is which. Mm. I think Smolder is just the fact that you can get your stacks in a pro game where people know you're get wing con by like twenty three minutes is disgusting. Like you'll be level twelve or thirteen with max or not max the max threshold is disgusting. It is getting nerfed um, on the live, so maybe it's not as I don't. I think it was getting nerfed right. But I don't know if it will be as impressive, but whatever. Quay, I think, is overtuned. His numbers are crazy. Hmm. Like, Quay, I think, is yeah. overtuned. I think his numbers are crazy. However, I think that's okay. Uh, when pros learn it, I hope the numbers are tuned down. He is kind of interesting to watch. But he has a lot of bullshit. Like, that character has no dashes, but has, like, more mobility than most mid laners in the game. Because he can run, he can fear, he can tether, he can just do everything. He can speed up. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, those are the two meta things that I'm like, I like Quay, uh, just because there is a little bit more variety in skill expression, and I think Smolder needs a lot of touching up to really be acceptable. I don't know if that character can be pro play acceptable with the way it works. I don't think he can be acceptable at any point. I think, I, I just... <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put this from AD, carry, AD Carry's perspective because obviously that's what I am. I think Solo Queue Smolder is the most worthless piece of garbage. I, mm. I've i given up on does trying to never play that work, champ. It's, it's that in Solo Queue, it doesn't matter if you walk out of lane with 10 kills on Smolder. It, it doesn't. What matters is you, you mm. get 225. Like it, right, because he's not a crit AD carry, so none of that actually matters, Yeah, like, right? his auto attacks don't do damage. His oh, W doesn't do damage. His E doesn't do damage. He's a Q bot through and through. And that's not something that works because, like, win lane on Smolder challenge is actually impossible. Like, you have to have your support just smurfing because, like, you're just going to get bodied by every AD carry and support, and especially the mm -hmm. support meta of, oh, yeah, they just picked Camille. Smolder doesn't get to play the game. Mm -hmm. I, my opinion is Smolder is kind of just a champ that they, it, they didn't, there wasn't really a heart, a lot of heart to it. Um, they just kind of, they thought they thought of a pun and a name to make him Smolder, and then made mm -hmm. him a baby dragon, and then tried to make him like all. Oh, I actually didn't ever realize that until you said it. Yeah, huh. mm -hmm. but it's, ma maybe yeah. it's because I'm Canadian, so I smell I spell Smolder with a U. But uh, oh, uh, yeah, because I'm like that's how you spell Smolder. Uh, I spell Smolder. Yeah, but like Graves is Graves. Gray mm. is spelled with an. A or E? I actually don't know which one. We I think we do E here, and you guys do A everywhere else in the world. Yeah, I, I believe no, so. I, yeah. But yeah. I think they just kind of like... It, it, he, does, he wasn't really inspired. He was just kind of like... They, they picked a really like goofy concept and kind of ran with it, and then... Yeah, well, inspired's a jungler, so it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just... I don't, I don't like the champion. I think God. it's a lot of fun, and the dopamine you get from playing the champion... Uh, it's so fun to play. It's so much fun to play, but he's also so miserable to play, because like... 
I, I hate him. I I, I hate too. Smolder. He, I hate his escape. It's it makes me it's as a jungler so broken, dude. As a jungler, it makes so me busted. as a jungler you don't get to pl- complain because you have Kane, which is better. But <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all right. I'm, to be I'm to a, be fair, I'm, that's arguable because he has to be by a wall. But he's got to be by a wall. Yeah, Free form um, ease with that kind of mobility and ability to change at tight angles at that speed is crazy. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, I, I, I don't. Kane is not even a real jungler in my mind. That's that's some like random ass like other fantasy that you yeah. play to like get orbs and shit. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, also it cannot I think, be balanced. I, I honestly <laughs> yeah. think Smolder is just one of the champs that just needs to be taken out of the game. They they just need to remove him and say, you know what, we messed up. We'll re-release him in six months. Do you think every anthro like every animal character like Yumi is he gonna just be the next Yumi? Unbalanceable. Um, I think Smolder would be I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even just say Yumi. I would. I would uh, make it akin to like most champions that they've released in the last two years. Tell me, Kasante has ever been balanced. Tell me, Zeri has well, ever Kasante been balanced. Is a complete miss. Like um, I, I think I, a lot of the champs they've released have just been complete misses, with the exception of maybe Huey. I like I. Looking at the champs that have been released recently, like they're all kind of like what that. What are the champions that have been released? So Huey, Smolder. What was before Huey? Uh, Briar. Briar. Briar is not Briar. balanced. Briar's, either, no, Briar's not Briar's balanced. Nefiri is perma trash. Only be strong or useless, right? Like with that kit. Yeah. Yeah. Briar is too. Yeah. Briar is broken for eight. They, the amount of times they nerfed that champion. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Smol- Smolder's exactly a miss. Quay, I would consider a, a hit. Briar's a miss. Nefiri's a miss. Milio is kind of neutral. Cassante's a miss. Nyla's a miss. Belbeth's yeah, a miss. I like the idea with Milio, even though. I like Nefiri. I'm okay with Nefiri. I have fun with her. She's cool. Again, I agree, but she's perma just terrible. The champ just sucks. I don't, nah, I don't think she's the fine. Champ, I don't think the champ's ever. Been <laughs> I, I I'm okay I with think she. Theory. I think she fulfills her purpose of having a assassin that like people who do not play assassins can play. Like I it's think so it's fun to just press W and fly from a mile away. <laughs> Wee! Yeah, like, I don't think it will ever be pro viable, and if it yeah. is, it's going to be its numbers are going to be so dumb. If it's I'm okay with pro-vi- it not being pro viable, I don't need to have Nefiri be pro viable. Yeah. I, agree. Uh, I think the only I mean I'm not even talking pro viable. I just don't think she's good in solo queue either. I just don't think she's good. I, I think, like, looking at the last she's, 16 I mean, champions not, released, at the last 16 yeah. champions released, I think three of them would be considered fine, in my opinion, which would be Huey, Renata, and Vex. I think the rest of them are... I think Renata's fine? I think Renata's unbalanceable. I think she, <laughs> That character I is think so busted. Fair, but I think she's... I don't think she's as easy as a lot of support. She's obviously not difficult because she is just an, she is an, at the end of the day. Yeah, there's a reason why Carrie is so good on her. Yeah. But I I do think she has I do think she has good counterplay. I think maybe her W could use a longer cooldown or maybe I she could use some tuning, I agree, but I think in the grand scheme of things, I would consider her I wouldn't consider her a miss of a champion personally. Okay. Yeah. This seems like this this should just be an episode based off of like analyzing the recent releases cuz I, I I can I can see the argument for some of these. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a good discussion that, but for this patch, yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah, let's let's talk about the patch because we are a uh, live patch kind of kind of kind of region, and I wanted to actually before we talk about the patch, I want to bring up with you guys. Isn't just this just the best life? Isn't this just the way? I think that going forward, maybe not this year, but next year, every region should just be live patch. I think it's just the best way to play the game. Uh, I think it's the most interesting way to for the viewers to connect with the game. Um, and you know what? It just takes away that feeling of being like, oh, God, we're going to get stuck in a bad patch, you know? Fine, mm-hmm. play, playoffs make sense to stick it to one patch. I'm not going to argue with that. But for regular season, guys, just keep it a live patch. It's fine, you know? I think it's cool. Um, so, yeah, what it, quick takes, quick takes, very quick. I agree. I think live patch is better. The only things that are issues are like you know major bugs that come out. But so far we got lucky and that hasn't happened. I just I as a viewer like it because I don't have to think what patch was that played on and I don't have to deal with the dumb shit that I saw already in my games. But see it forever, right? Like if they if they nerfed Cassante again, well I don't see Cassante in solo queue, but if I did, I would not want to see it another week, right? So I agree. I definitely prefer the live patch, but it also kind of it also kind of feels worse 
uh, in my opinion, when we get filler patches like we did this patch, in my opinion, like no, well, nothing's gonna change. You would you would have just still had you would have to play the filler patch and then watch it though. Yeah, I doors. guess I guess that's true. That, yeah, <laughs> the, that's the patches true. never go away if yeah. they're bad. <laughs> no, that that's true. I don't know. I. I mean, maybe it's just maybe just like instead of prolonging the suffering, it just may amplifies the suffering for two weeks. Maybe that's what it is, but I don't know. It like somehow karma dodge nerfs. Yeah, Ma but they hit a lot of other people though. That I think were pretty big. Did they though? Like, you, you have to remember yeah, the, for the, nerfs though, like other TF? regions matter okay, a lot like, too. Yeah, yeah, the TF was huge. TF, TF is big. Uh, the uh, who else? Um, I think Seraphine. Uh, Seraphine got a lot of changes, but I think that's. Re I think it's only a major hit to Seraphine's mid lane. Um, I don't think it's a huge I, hit to Seraphine bot, and it's a. Uh, honestly, Bel Belveth is kind of big in my opinion as a jungler. I think it is a big, pretty big nerf for her. Belveth like, is like a huge terrorist. I play. I hate Belveth so much. I agree, Sorry. but yeah. I just don't. Am I? I'd have to play against her because I haven't seen her this patch yet. But I'm, yeah, to be fair, no, I, to I, be fair, I played like three games on the patch. But I, <laughs> I feel like yeah, like she's been perma broken. But I just don't know how much this. Really I think it helps. It, it helps. I, I will take any any nerf to Belveth. I could take more. Oh, I, I completely agree. Uh, the the J four buff is actually. Um, I actually think it is a big deal, honestly. I don't know if it'll break into pro play, but I think it should. Mitchell, I I'm an ADC. Actually, if I see a, I see a okay. Jarvan buff, I cry. Good patch. It's a good patch. I, I, yeah. Good patch. Good patch. <laughs> no, honestly, the <laughs> highlight, highlight of the patch, patch, they saved League of Legends. Did you see the Kog'Maw passive changes? They <laughs> saved League of Legends, boys. Hey, let's go! It's an, it's a, it's an Alistair buff. Oh, there is something on the live patch that I forgot about <laughs> until recently, but... Um, it is going to change the game too. The fucking font change, guys. Like, what the hell was this? So what, what font change? Font have change. Oh, it's recently? so bad. I don't. All, like the, it. all the font has changed. The names have changed. The typing has changed. Everything. Yeah, I don't like it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I it's like played yesterday. Old. Yeah, it's like oh, maybe it was just today when I got uh, home. But like, that, that's what happened. No. It looks. It it irks me. Okay, mm. that's all I'm going to say. I I, yeah. I I don't get who's in charge. Like maybe you have to get like eight product changes a year out or something as a product manager. And that's why they have to change font as one of their filler key results or something. But this is it just hurts my eyes. Yeah. And they when they ever they change it, I don't like it. And I get like part of it's your bias toward like not liking change, right? But like sometimes it's like this is just egregious. This just looks bad. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's all I gotta say <laughs> about the font change. For sure. <laughs> well, other notable changes in my opinion that this patch actually did do. The Wukong mm. buffs are pretty fat. I think they are pretty large and those are gonna make a big difference. I don't know if they'll break into pro play for jungle or top or anything like that, but for solo queue, expect to see a lot more Wukong, because those are big buffs, mm -hmm. especially the top lane Wukong. Uh but jungle will take anything too. Um I also think the change to Frozen Heart uh, is a big deal. Um, it's not doesn't seem like a lot, but a lot of the point of Frozen Heart was the price point. It going up by a hundred gold and five armor less is a big swing in effectiveness, right? It's a big swing in how powerful the item is because that item's been broken for like years. Gold, right? no, for, that's two hundred last gold in effectiveness. At the beginning of the season, I'm surprised they just didn't put Frozen Heart in the inspiration tree with how cheap it was. Like it, it was so <laughs> stupid. Yeah, it's twenty three hundred, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I've never heard it described that way, but that's hilarious. I also, yeah, that is funny. I also think that the Maokai jungle buffs are going to be pretty big. Uh, his clear, yeah. his clear got buffed a decent amount. Why, bro? Uh, Why uh, it's because Freak needs to continue his insider trading on patch notes. <laughs> we, yeah. we live in a world where I do really like his transparency, as they said in the last episode. However, we also live in a world where he posts pictures of him getting to grandmasters or masters or whatever with Maokai, and then. And then nerfing it, right? And then buffing it again. And I don't and understand, it. bro. Uh, it, I don't, I don't know, man. Just I take, don't get it. Can, can, we someone, can someone just take Maokai out back and just shoot him? I don't want to see him in the game for another year. I'm going to be honest. Like, he's been meta for like three years straight, guys. I, I, think, I think Freak is delusional, and I think he needs to be removed from that team, personally. I think he does not know what he's doing, and he's just looking at numbers and saying, yeah, this is fine. He's talking about buffing jungle next patch. Oh, I mean, I'm down for that. Actually, I disagree with like, Alistair's take. He, completely. He, well, yeah. his his reasoning, <laughs> his, his reasoning for jungle, his, his reasoning for buffing jungle is that it's unpopular. When at the end of the day, it's not unpopular because it's bad. It's unpopular because it's too broken. It has too much responsibility that people don't want to have. I don't see. I don't like. There's. I don't think anyone can look at the game and say jungle's weak. 
Like you know, jungle has to, jungle to, has to gank three lanes. It has to take yeah. grubs or six grubs, herald dragons. You have to keep you have to keep four people you happy. To, you're responsible for turret plates for the most part. Exactly. Like there's like, there's so much stuff that jungle has them. to do. Yeah, you know what they need to figure out? They need to make like I, I know we've joked about this before, other people joked before. I'm not I'm not even joking anymore. I'm kinda down. They should make like a little barrier for jungles. Just like keep them in their little zone. I'm actually down for that. To just like hang out in my little like, like a non interaction there. Yeah. Kind of like uh, me, the Valorant gates. Sure, yeah. Put me in uh put me in my own little like uh my own Pokey Pals like little dungeon where I hang out with my, my jungle monsters, I kill them, I level up, and then once like Seven minutes comes or something. Let me free or something. I don't know. Dude, like, I would love to just be vibing bot lane and get hit by a two item Karthus ult at fifteen minutes when I haven't seen him the entire game. That sounds really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Do that. I mean, sure. I mean, <laughs> I mean the other thing is you get Jarvan level two ganking you, and then you come back to lane and he level three ganks you. Yeah, I think That's you would another world. Get your first item completed before the the, the Tom Fuller restarts. Yeah, exactly. Personally, like, I I just at the end of the day jungle has too much responsibility and it's too strong i don't know like like i said earlier riot has completely lost control of the game nothing makes sense and there's too far gone for them to make okay. any viable change in my opinion yeah let's you know haven't you right. been saying a version of this like, yeah, I've been saying years, this for like, like a decade i have been <laughs> look at the fucking game look at the yeah, game yeah. nothing makes sense why is camille support a thing why is supports a pta and crown like uh, why is carry yeah. allowed to play Callista support why is he allowed to play Ezreal support now? Damage Sadie carry. Nothing makes sense. I think Carrier fed the world the the pill. You know, like he's just like okay. No, I think we, bro, I think we broke. Just have been, no, we're it, broken for forever. This season and is can terrible. Bot. I can't play Le the game. League, League is broken, Alistair. Actually, no. I think League. I think Alistair's been broken for a while, but we just haven't heard from him in a bit. No, this, <laughs> this, 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 no, this season is so bad. I hate this season. It's actually miserable. <laughs> Uh, well, me, me and me and Mitchell just have mild taste. Like, yeah, the season's like kind of interesting with the new items, you know, whatever. Hey, it's man, like, I'm not an ADC exactly. for a reason, bro. Like, I would not touch that role with a ten foot rod. Is, like, like <laughs> I, there's no agency. It is. So I think miserable. ADC players self select into a sad time. No, yeah, I mean, I play right. jungle, and like, if I lose a game, like, yeah, sometimes it's like, oh, like all three of my lanes lost. You can't do anything about that. But otherwise, jungle is the best feeling because. The game is in your hands. You get to choose if you want to win or lose almost, right? So that's why I enjoy it. Also, mid and top lane, right? I feel like you can kind of choose whether you win or lose the game on your own yep. sort of thing. It feels like you have a ton of agency whether you win or lose. ADC, I don't even know why people play that shit. Like, you don't get to choose. I mean, I can tell you why. Like 20... I, I can tell you why. You, you can play it highs. because there's a certain class of champions that I gravitate towards. And it's those kind of champions. And if I go if I go play it and, like, if I go play Tristana mid, I get told to talent E off of the Empire State Building. Like, it's it's not fun. Like, it's it's a certain kind of place. Yeah, by the AD carry. <laughs> no, Tristana mid is so fun. By everyone in the Tristana lobby. mid is so like, fun. I, if I, 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 I can't play told a... to off themselves the most of every role. I, I, no, I, no, for sure. Don't get me wrong. Okay, but okay. I, I'm saying, agree I'm saying like, if you you become the bane of everyone in the game's existence if you start picking AD carry in a different role for them, like, unless it's like Kindred or Graves. Eh. Yeah, yeah, that that, eh. that is true. I mean, no one likes being top. We literally oh, no, said it in sure. this podcast. No, yeah, I, yeah I, no, but Trish Mid is fun as hell, guys. Oh my god, jumping on Bomba stopping people and actually being ahead in levels. No, that's fun. No, I, I, I agree. I think I don't, but that's like, fun as hell. If I want to play Aphelios, I can't play Aphelios top lane, bro. Like, I can't. Eh. You can. I've seen Dirt do yeah, it in yeah. Challenger. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw. I saw this rank two yeah, Korean Challenger guy do it. Who's one of the best players. Hey, it's in the world. possible. That's true. Like, it's possible. Yeah, so, based on that logic, you can do it in Korean Challenger. Objective. You know what? Yeah, Barry yeah, played Callista support. Time to one trick Callista support in my gold games. I'm yeah, stuck. fair enough. I'm gonna, what I'm happened in the gold you games? You don't think it's happening? Oh, I can't. Picks his year. This could go on forever. Yeah. Faker guys. picks his year. Is when rate drops down to forty percent because all of Korea starts playing his year. Yeah. Faker at, at the end, you know, that's just the life. At the end of the day, I just I think Riot needs to make some drastic changes. Like they, they base, I think they really need to streamline um, what is going to be allowed. How, what that looks like, I don't know, but I think that like there's there's too much flex fix. There's too much. Oh yeah, let me just build tank items on Smolder because I don't need damage because my champion is I don't need damage items because my champion is just pure true damage. Like, yeah, there, there's too much stuff okay. that doesn't make sense. It needs yeah. to change. I think I think you've made your point. Yeah. I think uh, we're going in circles a little bit about it, but I agree to a lot extent of some of the things you're saying. But I'm also going to say 
I'm down for some jungle buffs. I'm down to just see what they hire. Let's see what happens. Throw them in for a patch or two. I'm okay with it. You know, because no we all have our biases. Let's be real, okay? Alistair's opinion is very much about his bias. Hey, I hate the game when jungle's bad too. Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna be honest because let's be real. This game is really hard to balance, right? It's really hard to make everybody happy. Like you, like right now, solo laners and jungle, I think, are eating pretty decent this split and that wasn't always the I, case you never had everyone be happy before like no. I, i'm not saying this facetiously i actually not, don't know i don't it's not possible it, no it, I don't it's, think so. it's not possible but i think it's pretty universally agreed upon that the game is becoming more and more miserable in my opinion i i, I think i don't think i've ever i don't think i've seen anyone say season 11 was great season 10 was great season 12 yeah. was great i feel like the last time i've seen people saying a season was good was like yeah it was yeah, it's yeah. been a while it's okay it's okay yeah i think uh, i think we've made our point let's uh yep i agree yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't yeah, need yeah. to go we, in we, we, yeah it's okay so uh next week let's t uh briefly talk about what are some interesting we'll just talk about two interesting games because we kind of ran a bit long on that rant yep. um mm -hmm. but let's do team liquid versus fly quest who are we taking so just to remind everybody i know kevin who you're going to predict Okay, he's hiding from the camera because he's afraid to predict. No, my cat hides. <laughs> sure, I sure, will sure. Say my prediction, we, we as I do every it's year. Okay. We believe you. Yeah, so Team Liquid versus FlyQuest. <laughs> one team just went zero two. Uh, the other one went one one, but they both lost yeah. to Cloud Nine, right? Uh, no, no, no. Team Liquid not lose, but they did lose to Cloud Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did, but they yeah. should have won that. But they could have won. So you know, it's uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. Who do you think is going to win, Team Liquid versus FlyQuest? I mean, I'm going to go Cloud Nine. I, I'm okay, not, they're not playing. They're not playing. Uh, it's Team Liquid oh, versus FlyQuest. Sorry, <laughs> I, thought were, I thought you were saying that like facetiously. You're like, uh, no. because they both lost to. It's Cloud been a long day. I don't know. I I I, I, I was looking. I was looking at. Funny. I was looking at the TL Cloud Nine game from last week. Um, I'm it's okay. I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna say I'm gonna FlyQuest. Go FlyQuest personally. What? Yeah. You guys are both going FlyQuest. I'm disappointed, oh, yeah. you, Kevin. Okay, fine. I, do you want me to lie? I I usually I vote against Liquid all the time when they're bad. I don't want, like, I know. I just you know I was hoping for they, they had a they bad won a game, but like that was actually yeah. like an unthinkable loss to me. Yeah, maybe like, they it improved. did not make any sense. You see, this is what hap What happens next is because we both went FlyQuest. Mitchell's going to choose Team Liquid because need to be different, and then Team Liquid's going to win. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of down for that now. That you said it. You put that into the universe. I mean, no, I was gonna go FlyQuest as well. I was just hoping Kevin would go Team Liquid, but no, we're we're uh, you know, I think FlyQuest is gonna win. But just to fuck with Alistair's head, I'm gonna go Team Liquid. I'm gonna predict them. Look, to go team I've seen this happen too many <laughs> times. Lose, I've seen this happen too many time. times. I, it happens a lot. I just gotta go with it. All right. I Next, think we agreed on Team Liquid win and they lost. Anyways, that's cool true. We didn't agree, so maybe Team Liquid actually win. So I'm going Team Liquid's gonna beat them. Okay, Energy versus FlyQuest, another top matchup. Um, it usually happens when we have to produce the same team, right? But that's okay. Energy versus FlyQuest. Is Energy going to wake up and be at their max strength? Because I think that is a lot different than regular season strength. Or FlyQuest, the regular season gods, are they just gonna take it to them? Who's gonna win? That's so tough. I think NRG will win because of their win rate against better teams, mm. and plus it's, we're we're nearing the end of the season, so they mm. actually they actually should probably start turning it on. They're not going to pick Vayne top. Like we haven't gotten a clear read on them. Oh, this is super weak, yeah, right? Super Isn't it? Weak. It's just over. This is the last yeah. weekend. Yeah. Oh, so this is very important. important. I, that, yeah. Yes. My my prediction. I think it's the last NRG weekend. goes three and zero and loses tiebreaker. <laughs> oh god <laughs> okay <laughs> all right that's a hot one okay so you're voting energy versus okay uh there's yeah, no way i'm gonna vote FlyQuest gonna go zero two or zero three this weekend right no they're gonna go two, one two if i vote energy here yeah holy yeah, jesus see, that's that's what that's the reality right Fuck. if you vote that way i i, I don't know i think i, I will vote energy here and i wrote okay, FlyQuest to be liquid so you, you got two energy votes do i just be a contrarian or i actually think energy was going to win too all right i guess we'll go to energy no, then energy. <laughs> we're voting for energy there's only so many permutations when there are two teams play in an eight team week but yeah it's true <laughs> all right last one we're going to predict on the last day let's do honestly we'll do energy versus 100 thieves um i you know, I think most of us will probably think energy, but I think 100 Thieves has looked really good this split. Like, they have been unsuspectingly, yeah. like, tenacious and just scrappy, and they always have, like, River is just a god at the early game. Like, so, 
You know, I, I actually think, uh, you know, so we already know Alistair's vote because energy is going 3-0. What's, what's your vote, Kevin? I think I'll go with 100 Thieves. I don't think they can string together that many wins. <laughs> I'm actually going to go 100 <laughs> Thieves too, yeah. I think 100 I, I think, Thieves yeah. is going to clutch it, yeah. See, I, 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 Thieves? I think, I think yeah. energy is going to go 3-0 and and then lose. I think they it would be they lose... Yeah, energy goes three and zero. Oh, hundred thieves goes two and one, and then energy loses the tiebreaker to hundred thieves. That would be on brand. That would be very on brand. I could see that uh, universe happening. Um, yeah. All right. Well, interesting. They started. They started taking college students for their writers now. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! They started taking podcasters uh, for their writers. Yeah. Um, oh I'm, no! Even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Hundred thieves, though. I think so too. Okay. Then I guess all we have. Okay. So this is a bit of a longer episode than I thought because I forgot it was super week. But let's yeah, actually predict who, who who is gonna be the, our top. Uh, should we do top four or just top one? Who do you think? Maybe just top four. Let's just do a quick top right. four. Yeah, who do you think is top four at the end of, at the, end of the day for uh, for the LCS? I mean, I feel like this is a pretty easy answer, personally. Okay, it's, top four. Let's go. Let's hear it. In order or yeah, just in, in general? Order, That's in the general. question, right? Let's do it in order. Yeah, let's do it in order. Oh, okay. Um, based on my predictions, I think it'll be FlyQuest, and then it'll be NRG, then it would be C9 and 100 Thieves will play a tiebreaker for third, if there is a tiebreaker for third. Because C9 is just back enough that they would have to go 3 0, and I think their schedule doesn't enable them to just like pop off to the top. Let me actually double check. Hmm. Okay. But you know, before I, I check the matchups, that's what I think. I asked this question. I don't even know how I'm going to answer. So you go ahead. Uh, you go ahead, uh, <laughs> Alistair. Um. <laughs> I mean, I have to go based oh, off. I have teams. to go based off my predictions, oh. but realistically, I think it's going. Well, based off my predictions, it's FlyQuest, Hundred Thieves, Energy, Cloud Nine in that order. Um, mm. I think realistically, I mean, there's if FlyQuest, pretty much the most important game uh, for this weekend in my opinion is energy versus fly quest and then the second most important is energy versus 100 thieves uh because if fly if fly quest beats um energy and they don't get assuming I'm, I'm assuming here they don't lose to was it shopify and dig mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or sorry they don't they don't lose to tl and dig um then they can't be touched. They they lock first. But because I'm mm. predicting that hundred the or sorry, uh, energy beats them, that would put yeah. them at ten and three. But I'm also saying that energy beats hundred thieves, which is still ten wins for. Uh, yeah, it's the nine's r uh, record or not record. Their last games are all easy. It's like Dignos and Mortal Shopify. Oh so, yeah, you're right. They could actually. go three zero. So yeah, they they definitely but they still be so nine. They would still wins. have nine. They would have it would yeah. yeah. So if FlyQuest, uh, at least they get two wins, they're locked top, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like. Um, uh, no, 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 they could tie with 100 Thieves, I guess, theoretically. Yeah. Mm. Hard to say, hard to say. I'm going to go a bit of a YOLO one, because I'm looking at 100 Thieves' kind of schedule. Their only hard one is Energy, and I do think FlyQuest is going to drop some games. I actually think we could see 100 Thieves first place. At NRG is the only top team with a difficult schedule. Yeah. I'm going to go... Okay, here's my YOLO, because you guys are all giving uh, the, the basic ones, and I like to be a weird one. I like to be the weird uh -huh. one oh, on really? the Discord server. Yeah. So I'm going to go 100 Thieves, first place, FlyQuest, second place, and then I'm actually going to go Cloud9, then Energy. Ah, oh, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Cloud9, then Energy. Yeah. I mean, I definitely think that's plausible. I mean, yeah. if Cloud Nine's likely to go three and zero, that puts them at nine and five, and then that and then be a tiebreaker against FlyQuest, and I think they'll probably well, no, it, would, it wouldn't be a tiebreaker tiebreak against FlyQuest unless FlyQuest goes one and one and two this weekend. I am kind of predicting that, though, right? I'm predicting them to lose against TL and I'm oh, predicting yeah, us to lose yeah, against I Energy, guess that's true. Yeah, and yeah, they, you are. they would be Dignitas. So. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, so I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll just throw that out. Oh, how crazy it would be if it's 100 Thieves, Cloud9, and then FlyQuest third after all this. That is actually possible. FlyQuest I mean, that's very third. NA. Yeah. That is so NA. That is so regular season, like, top. That is so FlyQuest, honestly. Yeah. From, like, other iterations, too. All right, Yellow. 100 Thieves, Cloud9, FlyQuest, Energy. That's my ranking. That's terrible. I can't believe I just predicted that. But it is I out there. 
It's now you the, put it into the world. I put it into the universe, and now it knows. Now, now League. I mean, it's has it's to... so close that like, yeah, it kind of doesn't matter that much, honestly. Either with with uh, playoffs, is I think if you as long as you're in the top four, you actually have a chance to win the whole thing, right? So that's fine. That's fine. All right. Well, that's gonna do it for us on this episode of the podcast. It was a bit of a long one. I'm glad to have Alistair back. Kevin, thanks mm-hmm. for joining me as usual. Uh, League Dad, we will pray for you as we haven't seen you in months, but um, <laughs> try not to be have too toxic. Seen, have you seen this League Dad? <laughs> yeah, yeah. we got to put him on some milk cartons or something. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> all right. Try not to be too toxic. We'll see you on the next episode, and peace.